Hello and welcome back to the channel Science Matcher Engineering. Today we are going to solve the GATE 2012 Mechanical Engineering Paper Part 1. So in this paper we will discuss the first 25 questions that are of 1 marks and that came in the GATE 2012 Mechanical Engineering Paper. Okay. So let's get started. In abrasive jet machining, as the distance between the nozzle tip and the work surface increases, the metal removal rate. So, what happens to it? Does it increase continuously, decreases continuously, decreases becomes stable and then increases, or increases becomes stable and then decreases? Okay. So, the answer is D. So, the metal removal rate first increases, then becomes stable and then decreases. So what happens in abrasive jet machining? We have a slurry of abrasives that are hit to the workpiece. Now, as we have this, uh, as this abrasives comes through a nozzle, so if we increase the nozzle tip distance, so what happens is that as these uh, particles were coming uh, at a certain acceleration, so it gets more time. Uh, it gets more time and as such the velocity increases because the acceleration is constant. So, velocity increases and so these abrasive uh, the particles strike at a greater velocity and so the material removal rate increases. However, as we increase the nozzle tip distance, the atmospheric drag starts uh, to reduce the velocity of these abrasive particles and so this uh, uh, material removal rate becomes stable and then again decreases as we increase the nozzle tip distance too far okay so this is a graph that is shown so it initially increases then becomes stable and then decreases okay so we'll go to the next question match the following metal forming processes with their associated stresses so we have coining wire drawing blanking and deep drawing and the type of stresses are tensile stress, shear stress, tensile compressive stress, and only compressive stress. And here we are given for the options, we are given certain combinations. Okay. So the answer is the coining. Coining is a closed die forging operation. So it is it is compressive stresses are induced on the coin by means of a pi and a uh, sorry by means of a uh, punch and a die. Right. Then in Y drawing. Along with these tensile stresses, compression also plays a major role when this metal is squeezed down. Okay, so on one side we are pulling the wire, on the other side, this compression forces acts and it tries to push the metal out. Okay, so these compression forces are also acting. Okay, and then in shear, blanking, piercing, and punching operation. We have the shear stress that performs this operation. So these are called shearing operation. And again in deep drawing, compressive stresses are induced along with tensile stresses. So if we see that we have one is associated with S, two is associated with R, three is associated with Q, and four is again associated with R. So our options doesn't have because we are associating two options with R, we don't have that. So but we say that we assume that Y drawing only related to tensile stress, then our suitable option would be option A, where Y drawing is associated with only tensile, only tensile stress. Okay. So this is how we solve it. Okay. So we'll go to the next question. So in an interchangeable assembly, tabs of size. So this is the sub size. So this is the base the base diameter and this are the a tolerances that we have plus 0 0.040 and minus 0 0.040 millimeter and the whole is of size 25 is the base size again and then we have tolerance of plus 0 0.030 and plus 0 0.020 mm so the maximum interference in microns for this assembly would be so the answer here is that the for the maximum interference we need to find out the maximum sub size and the minimum whole size so maximum sub diameter would be 25 
25.040 and minimum hole diameter would be 25.020 millimeter. So we have the maximum interference would be of 0 0.020 millimeter, which is 20 micron. Okay. So we'll go to the next question. During normalizing process of steel, the specimen is heated A between the upper and lower critical temperature and cooled in steel air B above the upper critical temperature and cooled in furnace C above the upper critical temperature and cooled in steel air or D between the upper and lower critical temperature and cooled in furnace. So the answer is that in normalizing we it is beyond the apparent and lower critical temperature cooled in steel air. And during full annealing, here we have written annealing, but it is full annealing process of steel. The specimen is heated above the apparent critical temperature and cooled in furnace. So, in annealing, it is slow cooling, whereas in normalizing, it is cooled in steel air. So, it is fast cooling. Okay. So, this is the difference. So, our option is C, but I have also given you an update on how annealing and normalizing are different okay so we'll go to the next question oil flows through a 200 millimeter diameter horizontal cast iron pipe friction factor is given of length 500 meter the volumetric flow rate is 0 0.2 meter cube per second so q dot is given so head loss in meter due to friction so we need to find it through the darcy weisberg equation so the answer is from the darcy weisberg equation we have hf is equal to f into l into v square by d into 2c so we have all the values so area we need to find out from d so from here we know the hf would be equal to 116.186 The head loss. So we'll go to the next question. For an opaque surface, the absorptivity, transmissivity, and reflectivity are related by the equation. So these are the equations. So the answer is C. For an opaque body, transmissivity is zero. So no, if it is an opaque body, so the body doesn't transmit any radiant energy however it can absorb and it can reflect so alpha absorptivity absorptivity plus reflectivity is equal to one okay so this is a small note you can see for your better understanding so we'll go to the next question steam enters an adiabatic turbine operating a steady state with an enthalpy of 3 to 5 1.0 kilojoule per kg and leaves as a saturated mixture at 15 kilopascal with quality that is dryness fraction of 0 0.9. Enthalpies of saturated liquid and vapor at 15 kilopascal are HF is given, HG is given. So, and then the mass flow rate is also given. So, if the kinetic energy and potential energy changes are negligible, the power output of the turbine is to be determined. So the answer is, you see, H1 we know, is already given, H2 is how much then? Because we get a quality of steam and then we know HF and HG you know. So HFC is HG minus HF. So from here we get H2, it is 2361.064 kilojoule per kg. So power output of the turbine would be m dot into h1 minus h2 remember this is only because we are neglecting the losses so from here we get power is approximately equal to 8.9 kilowatt so this option b so we'll go to the next question the following are the data for two crossed helical gears used for speed reduction the pitch circle diameter in the planar rotation is 80 millimeter and the helix angle is 30 degree. Again, for the gear 2, pitch circle diameter of uh, in the plane of rotation is 120 millimeter and helix angle is 22.5 degree. Now, input speed is already given, so we need to find out the output speed. So, the answer is see, 
it is around 900 rupees so we see how we are find out so we this are given so from velocity ratio it is given as n2 by n1 is equal to d1 by d2 into cos of phi 1 by cos of phi 2 now which implies n2 would be equal to n1 into this so from here once we put the helix angle values and the pitch circle diameter values we get it as 899.884 rpm which is approximately equal to 900 rpm so we'll go to the next question a solid disc of radius r rolls without slipping on a horizontal floor with angular velocity omega and angular acceleration alpha the magnitude of the acceleration of the point of contact on the disc is a 0 b r alpha c r alpha square plus r omega square whole square plus r omega square so the answer is so it is d r omega square so we see linear velocity v would be equal to r omega right then tangential acceleration at would be equal to dv by dt so we have at is equal to r into alpha now the instantaneous velocity at this point of contact a is zero so as this can touching so the instantaneous velocity is zero so at at a would be zero so what we have is that we only have the centripetal acceleration which is ac is equal to r omega square so net acceleration would be then r omega square so we'll go to the next question a thin wall spherical cell is subjected to an internal pressure if the radius of the cell is increased by one percent and the thickness is reduced by one percent with the internal pressure remaining the same the percentage change in hoop stress is so the answer is see this is given and hoop stress for a cylinder is given by pd by 2t so hoop stress for the new cylinder that is sigma c2 would be equal to p2d2 by 2t2 so once you put the value of p2 p2 and p1 is same then d2 is again 1.01 of d1 as it is 1% increase and then thickness is reduced by 1% so it will be t2 would be 0 0.99 into t1 so from here we get that new hoop stress is 1.0202 of the, uh, the earlier hoop stress that is sigma c1 so percentage change is 2.02 percent okay so we'll go to the next question the area enclosed between the straight line y equal to x and the parabola y equal to x square in the x square plane is so basically we have two two lines one is a straight line another is a parabola we need to find out the area enclosed between them so the answer is a one by so how we find out we have y equal to x and y equal to x square so if we compute y we get x equal to x square or x square minus x equal to 0 implies x into x minus 1 equal so x equal to 0 and x equal to 1 are the points where these two lines meet so the area bounded by these two lines would be a is equal to integration of 0 to 1 x minus x square dx so from here you get a is equal to x square by 2 minus x cube by 3 the limit is 0 and 1 so you get 1 by 2 minus 1 by 3 as we put 0 it is done so we have 1 by 6 so this is the area that is enclosed okay so we'll go to the next question consider the function fx equal to mod of x in the interval minus 1 less than equal to x less than equal to 1 so at the point x equal to 0 fx is we need to find out whether fx is continuous or not and whether fx is differentiable or not so the answer is see the function is said to be continuous if at that point fa exists and limit exists and the limit is also equal to f of x now left hand limit is limit of x tends to 0 minus fa so as we give so it becomes 0 and right hand limit is again 0 so f of 0 
is equal to 0 and so f is continuous at x equal to 0. Now left hand limit for the differentiation is limit h tends to 0 f of 0 minus h minus f of 0 by minus h. So what we get is minus 1 and right hand limit we get as 1. Now as these limits are not equal, so what we get is that f is not differentiable at x equal to 0. So we will go to the next question. Which one of the following is not a decision taken during the aggregate production planning stage? A. The dueling of machine. B. Amount of labor to be committed. C. Rate at which production should happen. Or D. Inventory to be carried forward. So the answer is A. Scheduling of machine. So what happens is that in aggregate production planning, we try to determine the company's production, inventory and employment levels over a finite amount of time. It is at max to max of 18 months and we do it in such a way so that the company incurs the minimum overall cost of operation. So in this one, we do not schedule we do not uh, take the decision of scheduling of machine, so we do, we do not schedule the which machine will do which job, but the other production inventory and employment levels we do finalize. So, A is the correct option. So, we will go to the next question. Limit x tends to 0, 1 minus cos x by x square is, so the answer is B, 1 by 2. So, whenever this kind of equation problems come limit of limit so what we do we try to see that the denominator doesn't tend to zero and if it tends to zero so we apply l of x rule and differentiate both numerator and denominator and we try to do it so that till when we have we our denominator doesn't tends to zero so once we differentiate we can limit x tends to zero sin x by 2x again x tends to zero so what we do x if we put 0 then it is again not defined so again we differentiate again so we get sin x by x becomes cos x by 1 so we have uh, half into cos x by so the answer is half so as x is with 0 you put cos 0 is 1 and denominator is 1 so it is 1 half into 1 is 1 so we will go to the next question a cnc vertical milling machine has to cut a straight slot of 10 mm width and 2 mm depth by a cutter of 10 mm diameter between points 00, 0 and 100, 100 on the xy plane diamond xy plane the feed rate used for milling is 50 mm per minute milling time for the slot is so the answer is be 170 seconds. So see our width of the cut and the diameter of the cutter are of the same size that is 10 millimeter. So the cutter can cut the slot in one pass. Now total length of the slot is from 00, 0 to 100, 100. So it is root over 100 minus 0 whole square plus 100 minus 0 whole square. So it is diagonal. So it is 100 root 2. Now feed rate is 50 mm per minute, so time would be L by F would be 100 root 2 by 50 it's minute, so it is 2 root 2 minute, that is almost equal to 170 seconds. So we will go to the next question. A solid cylinder of diameter 100 mm and height 50 mm is forced between two frictionless flat dies to a height of 25 mm. The percentage change in diameter is so here the solid cylinder has a diameter and length is given and this forging is done between two frictionless flat and the height has been reduced so the what is the ch percentage change in diameter so we have we have to find out the new diameter first so our volume is same so new diameter would be equal to root 2 into d1 okay so percentage change would be root 2 into d1 minus d1 divided by d1. So it is root 2 minus 1 into 100. So it is 
approximately 41.4 percent that is option d we'll go to the next question the velocity triangles at the inlet and exit of the rotor of a turbo machine are shown p denotes the absolute velocity of the fluid w denotes the relative velocity of the fluid and u denotes the blade velocity subscript 1 and 2 refer to inlet and outlet respectively if v2 equal to w1 and v1 equal to w2 then the degree of reaction is so we need to find out the degree of reaction so the answer is the degree of reaction r is given by this equation okay so in this equation if we see the figure we can see that u1 is equal to u2 so we have u1 equal to u2 v2 is equal to w1 and v1 equal to w2 is already given so our r becomes w2 square minus w1 square divided by w2 square minus w1 square plus w2 square minus w1 square so it is 1 by 2 or 0 0.5 so we'll go to the next question which one of the following configurations has the highest fin effectiveness okay so is it a thin closely spaced fins b thin widely spaced fins c thick widely spaced fins or d thick closely spaced fins so the answer is a if we increase the ratio of perimeter to cross sectional area of the fin then the fin effectiveness increases so if we have thin closely spaced fins this will have the highest fin effectiveness okay so we'll go to the next question an ideal gas of mass m and temperature t1 undergoes a reversible isothermal process from an initial pressure p1 to final pressure p2 the heat loss during the process is q the entropy change delta s of the gas is a mr log of p2 by p1 b mr log of p1 by p2 c mr log of p2 by p1 minus q by p1 or d zero so the answer is b see it is an isothermal process so q is equal to integration of s1 to s2 t ds here t is t1 so it is t1 ds which is equal to t1 into s2 minus s1 now for an isothermal process work done is again p1 v1 into log of v2 by v1 okay now p1 v1 is what mr t1 so which is equal to mr t1 log of v2 by v1 now we know m r and t1 are constant here so p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so from where you get v2 by v1 is equal to p1 by p2 so we have w is equal to m r t1 log of p1 by p2 now this heat loss q is equal to the w so which implies t1 into s2 minus s1 is equal to mr t1 log of p1 by p2 so s2 minus s1 would be equal to mr log of p1 by p2 that is the entropy change is mr log of p1 by p2 okay so we'll go to the next question in the mechanism given below if the angular velocity of the eccentric circular disc is 1 radian per second the angular velocity in radian per second of the follower link this link for the instance shown in the figure is so we need to find out its angular velocity so the options are 0 0.05 b 0 0.1 c 5 or d 10 now here all these dimensions are in millimeter so the answer is b 0 0.1 radian per second see what we need to do is that we need to first construct o b okay we name this link a b and then we construct a perpendicular from o to b so it is ob so this would always be perpendicular actually because this, this is touching at a point it is a tangent this link is a tangent to this so this is perpendicular now to ob we draw perpendicular cd so now if you see a b o and c d o are similar triangles so c d by a b is equal to CO by AO which is equal to 5 by 50 which is equal to 1 by 10. Now 
in triangle OAB, we can find AB by Pythagoras theorem, which is equal to AO square minus OB square. This OB is the radius of this disk, so it is given as 25. So we know from Pythagoras theorem we get AB is equal to 43.3 millimeter. Now CD would be equal to then CD by AB is 1 by 10, so CD would be 40. 3.3 by 10 which is equal to 4.33 millimeter. Now you see that this velocity of this link at point B would be equal to the velocity at D as these are parts of the same link OB. Okay. So VB would be equal to VD which is equal to CD into omega. Right. So we get Pb is equal to 4.33 millimeter per second as omega is 1 radian per second. Now, next we see that omega AB would be how much? Pb by AB. This Pb is equal to AB omega, right? We know P is equal to R omega. So, from here we get omega AB would be equal to 4.33 millimeter divided by 43.3 millimeter, which is equal 4.33 millimeter, this millimeter per second divided by 40. 3.3 millimeter which is equal to 0 0.1 radian per second okay so we'll go to the next question a circular solid disc of uniform thickness 20 millimeter radius 200 millimeter and mass 20 kg is used as a flywheel if it rotates at 600 rpm the kinetic energy of the flywheel in joules is so the answer is We know R, M, and RPM, N. Now, moment of inertia I is equal to MR square by 2, which is 0 0.4 kg meter square. Again, angular velocity omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60, so it is 20 pi per second. So, kinetic energy of the this would be half of I omega square, which is equal to half into 0 0.4 into 20 pi whole square. So, it comes around 790. So, we will go to the next question. A cantilever beam of length L is subjected to a moment M at the free end. The moment of inertia of the beam cross section about the neutral axis is I and the Young's modulus is E. The magnitude of the maximum deflection is, so we need to find out the maximum deflection. So, the answer is, you see, E i d 2 y by d x square equal to m. So, from here if we integrate, we find that E i d y by d x equal to m x plus c 1. Now, at x equal to 0, d y by d x is 0. So, c 1 is 0. So, if we integrate, uh, so we have E i d y by d x equal to m x. Now, if we integrate again, we get E i into y is equal to m x square by 2 plus c 2. Again at x equal to 0, y is equal to 0, so c2 is 0, so we get e i y equal to m x square by 2. So from here we get y is equal to m x square by 2 e i. Now the deflection is maximum with the free end that is at x equal to l, y would be y max, so y max would be equal to m into l square divided by 2 e i. Okay. So we will go to the next question. For a long slender column of uniform cross section, the ratio of critical buckling load for the case with both ends clamped to the case with both ends hinged is. So, we have two cases. We need to find out the ratio of their critical buckling load. So, the answer is that the critical buckling load for a case with both ends clamped is 4 pi square EI by L square, whereas critical buckling load for both ends hinge it pi square ei by l square so the ratio is 4 okay. so we'll go to the next question at x equal to 0 the function fx equal to x cube plus 1 has a a maximum value b a minimum value c a singularity or d a point of inflection so the answer is it has a point of inflection so how we find out 
we see fx we know then we find f dash x so f dash x if it is zero then we find out the point where it is maximum or minimum so we get x equal to zero now it can be a maxima or minima now so we found f double dash x so it becomes 6x now at x equal to 0 f double dash x is again 0 had, had this been positive then it would be a minima and had it been negative then it would be a maxima but as it is 0 so we have to again differentiate it so once we differentiate it we find that this is not equal to 0 its value is 6 so whenever we have this value that f double dash x is 0 and f triple dash x is not equal to 0 then it means fx has a point of inflection at that point x equal to 0 so our answer is d has a point of inflection so we'll go to the next question for the spherical surface x square plus y square plus z square equal to 1 the unit outward normal vector at the point 1 by root 2 comma 1 by root 2 comma 0 is given by so we need to find out the unit outward normal vector so the answer is so let us assume that f be a surface represented by this equation x square plus y square plus z square equal to 1 and this point that we that we are given 1 by root 2 comma 1 by 2 comma 0 is denoted by p now gradient of f would be equal to twice x comma twice x comma twice twice x comma twice y comma twice z and gradient and um, the value of this gradient at this point is root 2i plus root 2j plus 0 into k. So, this um, modulus of this gradient at this point would be 2. So, unit normal vector is given by n is equal to 1 by the mod of the gradient into the gradient of the vector of the surface at the point. So, we have n is equal to 1 by 2 into root 2i plus root 2 j plus 0 into k which is equal to 1 by root 2 i plus 1 by root 2 j ok so with this we conclude the 25 one more questions of gate 2012 mechanical engineering paper so thank you so we will come with the next uh, 15 questions of 2 marks and then the last 15 questions of 2 marks and after that we will come with the aptitude Thank you. See you in the next one.